This is how to export an animation and then convert it to a video using Premiere or Photoshop. All right, so before we get started, just make sure that if you have Adobe Media Encoder, then I probably wouldn't use either of these methods in this video. Instead, I would watch my other video that I have linked in the description below. Now, for all of you out there that have made an animation with Adobe Animate and don't have Adobe Media Encoder, but still have Premiere or Photoshop, then this video is for you. So when you're done your animation, all you have to do is go up to File and then down to Export and over to Export Movie. When you do that, it's actually gonna export every single frame as its own image. So this animation has 180 frames, so there's 180 images. You can save it as a different file type. So this one is a GIF GIF. My name is Jeff. But you can also change it to JPEG or PNG or whatever in there. But just know that each file type, so JPEG, GIF GIF, and PNG, will all have a different, well, slightly different menu that comes up on your export. Each one will have a width and height, like a resolution thing. So just pick what you think is appropriate for yours and click OK. And then Animate is gonna process your image export. Now, in order to turn that sequence of images into a video, you're gonna have to bring them into a program like Premiere Pro. So I'm just gonna double click here to import them. I'm gonna go to the folder that the images are in, click on the first one, slide down, hold Shift, click on the last one so it selects them all, click Open, that'll import them into my project right here. Then I just like to click on one of them and then click on where it says name right here to make sure that they're in ascending order. So I'm gonna slide up to the top. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. I'm gonna click on the first one now again, slide down, hold shift, click on the last one, and then click on any one of them and drag them into your sequence. At this point, if we play it though, you're gonna see that each one of these images is like three, four seconds probably. So to make it go fast, like an animation, I'm gonna slide this out so I can see all of the images. I'm gonna click over here to select them all, right click, go up to speed slash duration, and right in here for duration, I'm gonna change this number to zero, and over here, I'm gonna change this to zero, one. Make sure to click Ripple Edit Shifting Trail and Clips, then click OK. You're gonna see it looks like your whole thing kind of disappears, but it's actually just crunched down right there. So I'm gonna slide this over to zoom in so we can see them all again. Now when we play it, it'll play smooth like our animation. To export this, however, you now have to go up to File, down to Export, Media. The first thing we're gonna talk about in here is Output Name. So if you click on the blue right here, this is where you name the file. So I'm gonna call this one Test1 MP4 and you pick the folder that it's gonna go in. So mine's in Exports and Animate. When you have what you want, click Save. Then you're gonna pick your format. And typically there's two that are really common to choose from. So one is H.264. This'll export to an MP4 video that is good for like playback or like uploading to YouTube, stuff like that. And then there's QuickTime is kind of the other common one. That's for like high quality exports, a file that you're gonna save or that you're gonna send to a client or maybe for future editing. So for H.264, you're gonna change your preset right here. So you can keep it as match source high bitrate or you can change it to a preset. So like high quality 1080p is maybe a good one or 4K. You can also pick like the YouTube or Twitter or Facebook presets. I'm just gonna pick high quality 1080p right there. For H.264, you're also gonna wanna go down to video down here and probably select this one, render at maximum depth and change your bit rate. So the lower the number, the lower the quality, the higher the number, the higher the quality, but also your file size will be much bigger. So pick what you want there. I'd click this one too, use maximum render quality and then hit export. If you're gonna go with QuickTime, then select QuickTime right there. As for your preset, most of them are pretty good. I tend to go with Apple ProRes 422HQ. It's a good file size and it's still really high quality. Again, you're gonna name it if you want there. Down here, there's not really much to change for QuickTime. Just go down here and now hit export. And that'll export your video into the folder that you picked right here. And finally, if you don't have Premiere and you only have Photoshop, you can still export your video by doing it the same way as you would for a stop motion. So we're gonna open up a new project that's 1920 by 1080. We're gonna go up to File, down to Scripts, and over to Load Files into Stack. From there, you're gonna pick your files. So I'm gonna to go to Browse, and then I'm gonna find my images. If you don't see them show up, 
Then go down here and change this from large document format, like the Photoshop file, to all formats. That'll make your JPEGs show up or PNGs or whatever. I'm going to click on the first one again, scroll down, hold shift, click on the last one, and then click open. It might take some time, but your images will load up right here. Then just click OK. Once all your images have loaded into Photoshop, just go up to Window and then down to Timeline, which is going to open up down here. If you see Create Video Timeline, click this little drop down and change it to Create Frame Animation. Then actually click on the words Create Frame Animation. That's going to put Frame 1 right here. Then simply go to this little hamburger, click on it, and make sure that both of these are selected. So create new layer for each new frame as well. Click on that one. Then go back into the hamburger and select Make Frames from Layers. That will take all of your images here and load them up as frames in the timeline. Just be aware that oftentimes they get uploaded backwards like mine did here. If that happens, just go back to the hamburger and click Reverse Frames. That'll put it back in the right order, hopefully. If you want to make sure that it's going in the right direction, just slide this bar over to the start, click on one, and then click play right here. You're going to notice that it's going to be really, really choppy. Uh, just ignore that for now. Just confirm that it's going in the right direction and then stop it when you're good. If you want to change the speed at which all of these frames happen concurrently, then again, just go to the little hamburger thing and go up to select all frames. Then at any one of them here where there's this zero seconds and little drop down, click on that and you can change the delay between them. So I would suggest just leaving it at no delay, but if you want it even slower, then add delay between each frame. This is good for like if you're doing like a slideshow or something like that. Not very good for an animation. So like I said, click no delay. I would just leave it like that. So at this point, we're ready to export, which means all we have to do is go up to file, down to export, and over to render video right here. That'll bring up a similar export window that we saw for Premiere. Up here, just name it. So I'm going to call it test 2 mp4. I'm going to select the folder right here. So I'm going to pick the same folder. So my video export test folder and select that. Then down here, again, for format, if you click this drop down, you're going to see the same two that I talked about earlier, H.264 and QuickTime plus DPX. I'm still just going to talk about these two. If you click H.264 under preset, you're going to get all those same presets that we had before. I'm going to click high quality for now. But now when we go to QuickTime, you're only going to get high quality, medium quality, and uncompressed, which would be actually the highest quality. So for now, I'm just going to go back to H.264 and high quality because that's similar to what I tried in Premiere. For document size, again, you can adjust it right here. Drop this to 720, bump it up to 2160 for 4K. And down here is frame rate. So in our case, I was animating at 30 frames per second, so it's going to show up at the same frame rate as my document frame rate, so 30 frames per second. If you were animating at 24, it would show up at 24, and so on. Okay, once you have all that picked, then just click Render, and it will make your video. Now, just to compare export quality, I'm going to double click on this one. This was the export from Premiere. You can see it's pretty good, except some image degradation right there, like some noise. I'm going to exit out of this one. Let's look at the one from Photoshop. See, moves pretty much the same. Same kind of image quality, maybe even a little bit worse in there, I think. And then the last one, this is what it looks like right out of Animate using Adobe Media Encoder. So much cleaner as you can see here. Now, if we were to jump over to Premiere and take a look at what a QuickTime export was, so this was another one that I did as an MOV QuickTime export right from Premiere. I'm going to click over here and make it full screen. You can see that the QuickTime export is much cleaner. So if you are going to export from Premiere or Photoshop, I would suggest using QuickTime and the highest quality you can if you want a clean animation. But if you want to learn how to export from Animate using Adobe Media Encoder, which is much easier, then make sure to watch the video that's on the screen right now.